And the D-Train does have a scheduled stop tonight at Dolphin Stadium on his way in. He might as well pick up a certain shortstop and bring him on into the station. The Marlins, the Cardinals finish off this three-game series. The Marlins a chance to take the series and a chance to win their fourth game on this very important 10-game homestand. Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. Welcome to Dolphin Stadium for the final game of this three-game series and another night to look at one of the most electrifying players in baseball. We saw it last night, Tommy. Hanley Ramirez certainly impact the game. We're lucky. You're lucky. We get to see Hanley every day. Every day that he goes out there, he has been absolutely tremendous. All he's done lately, as you see him hitting a double, he also homered in the game last night at three RBIs. Hanley working on a nine-game hitting streak, hitting 425 during that time. That was his 15th home run of the year. Hey, remember, he had 17 all of last year. He's second in the league in runs scored. He's third in the league in base hits. Hanley Ramirez is ex as exciting as it's going to get. All right, who does he get to face when he's at the plate tonight? Our Pennzoil pitching matchup for tonight's ball game. Kip Wells has had a rough year. I mean, 3-12 and 12 is a rough year with a 6-2-5 ERA. Now, Dontrell Willis, his last win was in late May. Willis wants to rebound from an awful start his last time out, and a lot of people expect that Dontrell will do just that. So it's Willis, it's Wells, it's the Marlins hanging together. They took two of three from Washington, a chance to take two of three from the Cardinals. Dontrell Willis, center stage. Tonight, the Marlins, the Cardinals coming up. Baseball and Sun Sports brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Come in now during the Big One sales event for deals so big you'll get excited. By Bell South, the new AT&T, and by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Cardinals, Marlins, here at Dolphin Stadium. Dontra Willis will face this lineup. Brought to you by Tony La Russa and Toyota. David Eckstein in the leadoff spot. Very good at Dolphin Stadium. So Taguchi, Albert Pujols, Juan Encarnacion, Ryan Ludwig. Yadier Molina, the catcher, Aaron Miles is at second base. Brendan Ryan gets a start at third, and Kip Wells is the pitcher. Five losses since his last win on May 29th. He's looking to pick one up tonight, his eighth win. Good it, start. Ed Hickox calls strike one. In the air, shallow right. Permita went back, now comes in and makes the catch with a Mezaga closing as well. Well, you're going to see a couple of changes as Rico brings you the defense tonight. Eric Reed gets the start. He'll be in center field. And the reason being, Alfredo Amezaga, the amazing one, moves into play second base. Jacobs and Cabrera at the corners. Miguel Olivo handling Don Trell Willis. So Taguchi now in the two spot pesky hitter and Willis misses down low with a fastball the Cardinals as we have noted are without Scott Rowland tonight he went back to St. Louis to have his shoulder examined they did not replace him on the roster so a position man down are the Cardinals Taguchi getting the call out in center field we saw Skip Schumacher there the first two games of the series. Yeah, Tony La Russa has loaded up with right-handed bats, which we've seen most managers do against Don Trell. You got Ryan Ludwig in the uh, lineup, Brendan Ryan, the switch hitter, Aaron Miles. So lots of righties in Tony's lineup tonight. It's amazing. 30 years as a big league manager. His first job with the Chicago White Sox when he was a youngster. He was a uh, top prospect for the Oakland Athletics. Got to the big leagues, never stuck there. And began his managerial career with the White Sox seven and a half years. And the White Sox inexplicably fired him. And about two weeks later, the Oakland A's hired him. Line shot, base hit, left field. And ever since then, LaRusso has been riding his own ticket. The world championship in Oakland and now one in St. Louis. Well, he made the most out of uh, a career in the major leagues that just didn't work out for him. Tony LaRusso played in 132 games. As a major leaguer, hit below 200, but decided to go another path, and it has been a successful 
probably Hall of Fame a path for Tony La Russa. Here is Albert Pujols. I think some people, in terms of La Russa, get on him, criticize him, because he is so serious. He, he's not a, an affable guy, a, a joking guy. That one almost hit Pujols, and Taguchi is down at second base. And Olivo's out to talk to Dontrell Willis. This is the uh, area that has given Dontrell trouble, not necessarily the wild pitch. This is number five on the year, but just the lack of pinpoint control. That ball got away from him and allowed Taguchi to get to second base. If you talk to people, though, Rich, who are around La Russa, guys on his staff, they'll tell you differently. Oh, absolutely. Hit hard and fair down the left field line, and that wild pitch is going to be costly because Taguchi's coming in. And Pujols has banged out an RBI double. Well, Cardinal fans can rest easy. Albert Pujols is back on track. An eight-game hitting streak now. And starting to drive in runs with consistency. Gets that ball just past Miguel Cabrera for his 58th RBI. Four for 13 now against Dontrell in his career. The Cardinals are not only without Scott Rowland, but with all the right-handed bats in the lineup, they lose some power with Chris Duncan not getting the start. And Encarnacion takes down low. 1-0. 0 oh for 5 in the series. And Dontrell's pickoff throw is not in time. Joe West is out there at second base. Hey, amazing in itself, the fact that Amezaga is starting at second base and has the presence of mind to see where Pujols is and put a play on. <laughs> Dan Ugla getting the night off. A strike to Encarnacion, it's one and one. First inning runs in 21 starts have been a problem for Dontrell. I think so much of Dontrell is the rhythm. And at times he doesn't get into that nice rhythm until he gets into the game, a couple of innings. He has shown tonight, though, a nice smoothness in his delivery. Encarnacion, that's a fair ball. And Pujols around third. Here's the throw to second. And a sliding double for Encarnacion. And a 2 nothing lead for the Cardinals. Three consecutive hits for St. Louis. Smoothness aside, you still have to make pitches to major league hitters. And the pitch that Pujols hit was middle of the plate. That one middle of the plate. And a couple of right-handers, Pujols and Encarnacion, with RBI doubles. Olivo for his second visit out to talk to Willis. Ryan Ludwig coming to the plate for the Cardinals. We mentioned it last night. Ludwig spent his entire season last year in Toledo, AAA with the Tigers, teammate of Lee Gardner's. I talked to Guardy today and I asked him what kind of guy is Ludwig what kind of player was he he's his outstanding player it's, and we've told you that Gardner kind of got stuck in a spot triple A for the Tigers last year the Tigers were super well they, they were loaded with pitching they too. did they were loaded with pitching they didn't have a lot of injuries so a lot of guys who were having great years got stuck in triple A and luck Ludwig was one of those guys. He had 28 home runs in AAA last year. Gardner was one of the others. He was their closer and had a good year out of the bullpen. But Gardy said everybody, the veteran guys that were stuck there, just kind of banded together. They won their division. They went to the International League Championship Series and won the International League. That's a, a good story because it tells you that those guys on that team realize they look the uh, the parent club the major league club. They're pretty good and they don't have many injuries. There's no sense us uh, moping around down here in triple A. Let's have good years and have a good team. Yeah, Gardy said a lot of the guys realized that they weren't necessarily playing for a promotion that year. 
but a shot at next year wherever they might be and a strikeout for Dontre Willis he gets Ludwig good comeback got ahead and was able to put him away with his slider Yadier Molina now Cardinal catcher RBI doubles by Albert Pujols and Juan Encarnacion have touched up Dontre Willis for a couple of first inning runs on a night where the Marlins face a struggling Kip Wells. Dontrell last year 12 and 12. His earned run average under four. It was 3.87. And remember, a, a Willis here at seven and eight with a 4.81 ERA. Here's a guy that in his career, 65 and 47. His career ERA is in the mid threes, 3.61. So basically, for Don Trell, who has gotten lots of run support, the ERA is giving up a run, run more a game this year. Count two and one. And his pitch count up. This is number 22. Marlins bullpen, I don't want to say taxed, but used last night generously. There's a strike. Five relievers came out of the pen last night, and they were all splendid. Justin Miller, Matt Lindstrom, Armando Benitez. Lee Gardner, that man, Taylor Tankersley. Four innings, no runs from that bullpen. Willis finishes the first with a strikeout. So a pair of punch outs for Don Trell, but the Cardinals punch out a pair of runs. Pujols' double, Encarnacion's double. It's 2 nothing. Florida Marlins Baseball está disponible en español vía SAP y es presentado por KFC. Marlins down 2 nothing. The fish come in at 45 and 49 in this ball game. The lineup brought to you by Toyota. Hanley Ramirez in the leadoff spot, the amazing one. Alfredo Amezaga hits second. Miguel Cabrera, Mike Jacobs, an eight game hit streak right now. Josh Willingham, Jeremy Hermina, Miguel Olivo, Eric Reed gets a start in center, and Dontrell Willis in the nine spot. Taking a look at the 25-year-old, uh, excuse me, Kip Wells, a little bit older than that, 30-year-old. We've seen him a few times. We even know that his real name's Robert. <laughs> he did give up Bonds' 600th home run, and he's had success against the Marlins, 3-3, three and three, but a nice 2.36 ERA. We saw a lot of that success when he was pitching for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Yeah, I mean, there's the rub. He's 3-12, and 12, but he's been very good against the fish. And Hanley leads it off, goes after the first pitch. Hits it in the air to right field. Encarnacion makes the catch. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Hey, thank you very much, Rich. Yes, uh, Dan Ugla started every single game at the uh, second base for the Marlins until here. Uh, Alfredo Mezica getting the start. And Freddy Gonzalez said, you know, he wanted to give Dan a day off. He told him before the game yesterday, he likes to let the guy know ahead of time that he can enjoy the night, just relax, doesn't have to worry about starting. But he did say you might see him coming off the bench. And here's the amazing Mezica now getting a chance to play second base for the first time this season as a starter. Back to you. Alfredo in the two spot. And he leans in and takes a fastball high. You think somebody has to remind Alfredo, hey, you're hitting second tonight, not eighth. <laughs> Be ready. I think his big buddy Miggy would do the, the honors for that because Cabrera's on deck. Alfredo bunting and fouling it back. Amezaga last night had a couple of hits. He had a base hit on Monday night. Eight hits on the homestand. This homestand started with Washington. The Marlins took two of three for the Nationals. They've split the first two with the Cardinals. And the Cincinnati Reds arrive tomorrow night, fresh off a three-game sweep in Atlanta over the Braves. 5-4 in 15 innings. Cincinnati winning today. Amezaga lines it to center field. Taguchi. Makes the catch. 
Let's take a look at that Cardinal defense brought to you by Rico Juan Encarnacion starting in in a familiar place for him. He has been a Marlin. He has played out there many times. Ludwig and Taguchi filling out the outfield. We talked about the third baseman Brendan Ryan David X9 Aaron Miles Pujols and Yadier Molina behind the plate. Cabrera now. And Wells with a sharp breaking ball for a strike. Miggy in his career has 17 at bats against Kip Wells and just four hits. Well, he dropped in two nice curveballs to start him off and get ahead 0 and 2. Baylor University and a first round pick of the White Sox in 98. Then ended up in Pittsburgh, as Tommy pointed out, for five seasons. Oh, two. I wonder if they had arguments around the house. I mean, he he pitched at Baylor, and his father pitched four years at University of Texas. <laughs> One two. Buries that fastball low and inside, 93 miles an hour. Two balls, two strikes. Wells, boy, his last time out, he didn't last long. An inning, six runs, eight hits at Philadelphia. And the Phillies right now are scoring a bunch of runs. 2-2 two -two pitch is down low. The Phillies scored 15 runs in Los Angeles against the Dodgers last night. They of course they did. They get 26 hits. And you know the funny thing is <laughs> they left 14 men on base. <laughs> hey, they had two guys with five hits. Victorino and Rowan. Here's the 3 2 to Cabrera. Miguel pulls it and is saying it went off his foot. The Cardinals I don't think agree. Maybe Miggy pulled a fast one. We'll take a look. Well, home plate umpire Ed Hickox getting confirmation from Ed Rapuano at third base, who has a better look. And Rapuano saying yes. Hard to tell from that angle. Looked like it took a funny spin, though, as it went out in the infield. I'm waiting for an umpire. Probably taking a little heat now. I'm waiting for an umpire to, that will say, I can neither confirm nor deny. And then he'll go into politics. <laughs> Here's the 3 2. <laughs> Down low, Cabrera walks. Boy, lots of breaking balls from Wells to Cabrera. You know, that's one of those situations that drives pitching coaches crazy. Kip Wells has a 2 0 lead. He got ahead 0 2 to Miguel Cabrera and eventually walked him. Why? I ask why, Rich. Tommy, I can neither <laughs> confirm nor deny <laughs> any knowledge of Kip Wells and his pitching One of the patterns. biggest differences in the game now as opposed to years ago. Go right after him. It's 2-0. Well, now he faces Jacobs, who's one of the hotter hitters that the Marlins have. An eight-game hitting streak. 14 hits in those eight games. And Jake fouls it off. Cardinals got two against Dontrell. A pair of RBI doubles, Albert Pujols, Juan Encarnacion. A one. And it's outside. A number that you threw out last night that was impressive. Jacobs, his split against lefties and righties, 265 against righties this year. Against lefties, 333. Yeah, he's hung in nicely against left handers this year.
Big swing and a miss. One and two. Wells did have a stretch where he was working out of the bullpen. He had four relief outings. Late June through early July. But this is uh, one of the situations LaRusse has gotten himself in, not by his choice, but he's had to mix and match in his starting rotation. The one two. Chopper in front of the plate. Wells will field and throw to first, and the Marlins are done here in the first inning. The Cardinals have scored first, a 2 0 lead here in South Florida. <laughs> Dolphin Stadium, let's see what the second inning brings for Dontro Willis. Aaron Miles takes down low, and the count's one ball and one strike. Miles at second base. We saw him at shortstop earlier in the series. He can play three different infield positions. Yeah, he filled in at short when David Eckstein was on the disabled list. Miles always been a good hitter. And a guy that had to prove himself spent nine years in the minor leagues with the Astros and Rockies organizations. Got to the big leagues finally with Colorado. Hit 293 for the Rockies in 04. Out of Antioch, California. That has to be Northern California. It is. I was just going to say because it's not familiar, does not sound familiar to me. Aaron Miles is aboard. This week, Kevin Harvick and the number 29 Shell Pennzoil Pit Crew won the $11,000 Checkers Double Drive Through Challenge Award for spending the least amount of time on Pit Road with 185.512 seconds. Checkers congratulates the number 29 on the win. Here's Brendan Ryan. Scott Rowland not here, went back to St. Louis to have the shoulder examined. So Ryan gets the call at third base. Olivo blocks it. Miles stays at first. You know, it's going to be a battle for Miguel Olivo tonight, too, because remember, he had a rough game behind the plate the last time Don Trell started. So I think another important thing is to get these two guys working together. Two and one. Brendan Ryan's nickname is Boog. He grew up in Southern California and played his college ball at a small school powerhouse in Lewiston, Idaho. Lewis and Clark State NAIA school. Well, he's one of those guys that's uh, hit well, always hit well in the minor leagues. Yeah, getting a little opportunity with uh, Roland missing tonight from the lineup. Left field, base hit. So a walk and a single and a couple runners aboard. All right, Tommy, Dontro Willis obviously has struggled as of late. Any reasons why? Well, one of the things we talked to uh, Rick Kranitz about that he's trying to work on tonight, that he worked on in between starts. When he releases the ball, he had a tendency to have it a little sideways. They want him more on top to get a little more sync. And I think we've seen him try to work on that tonight. But so far, the results just aren't there. Well, something to watch as we go along. Kip Wells is up, and he will be bunting. And Olivo loses that one. That, you know, that's a real concern. If you've got a pitcher like Dontrell who is struggling and trying to find the zone, you need to have a catcher who can, who can catch the ball, a guy that can help, help maybe steal a few pitches for you. You give you the confidence that you can throw any pitch any time and and Miguel hasn't shown that with Don Trell. It's a struggle for him. There's the bunt and it's a foul ball. And I think Freddie may have been contemplating that. But with Dan Ugla the fact that he had 
told Dan the night before he was going to give him this game off. He wanted to, to make sure his offense was as good as possible. With Eric Reed out in center field. And Reed in the eighth spot in this lineup. Wells pulls it back. Not bunting. He's a good hitter. He fouls it back into the seats. He's hit four career home runs. Hey, he's hitting 310. Has a double, has a home run. He actually did something that's pretty rare for a pitcher a few years ago. He had two hits in an inning. That's rare for an everyday player. But as a pitcher back in uh, August of 02, he picked up two hits in an inning. In the modern era, as that one is fouled off, and Dontrell gets the strikeout. In the modern era, has a pitcher ever hit for the cycle? Uh, we'll have our staff looking looking up that right now. By the way, though, Kip Wells cannot hit here. He has struggled in this ballpark for some reason or another. He is now 0 for 13 at Dolphin Stadium with 11 strikeouts. So all that hitting has taken place elsewhere. He pitches well here, but he doesn't hit well here. Olivo out in front of home plate. No telling what is up with Eckstein. And runners at first and second. Hey, and Tony Larusa, one of those, and he has pretty good ingredients right here with the speed on the bases and X9 in the hitter. He's not afraid to put the hit and run on with a couple of men on. And a lot of times you see the hit and run with just a man at first base. Uh, Larusa, over the years, he's not afraid to do it with two men on base. X9 into left field. That's a base hit. Miles around third, they'll hold him. Willingham's throw is cut. And the Cardinals have him loaded up. Eckstein's base hit. And so Taguchi's coming up. Well, the struggles continue for Don Trout. He wanted to bury that pitch in. Infield cheating just a little. Handley over for a double play, but Eckstein turns on it and gets it into left field. Hit it so hard. Hit sharply enough that Miles couldn't score from second. So still an opportunity for Dontrell to get out of this in. Taguchi started the rally in the first with a single to left. And tonight especially, this is not a Cardinal lineup that is loaded with power hitters. To Gucci down the right field line, and that's real trouble. Miles will score. Ryan will score. Eckstein will hold at third. And the Cardinals have themselves two more runs. To Gucci's got a pair of hits. Well, he is Mr. Everything for the St. Louis Cardinals. Wherever you plug him in, he makes plays defensively in the outfield. Two seamer away. He doesn't try to pull it and stings it past Mike Jacobs for two RBIs. First base is open. The Marlins are going to walk pool holes. And to answer your question, Rich, we are getting putting our crack staff at work early tonight. We're getting confirmation that no pitcher has ever hit for the cycle. Hmm. You would think a, a Babe Ruth in his day or a, a Ken Brett. Yeah, I saw I saw Ken Brett hit home runs in four consecutive starts. No. As, as a Philly? As a Philly. And he was only with the Phillies one year. As we've seen happen with Dontrell, that pitch count gets up, and he's closing in on 50 pitches. So the Marlins have chosen to pitch to Encarnacion, who lined an RBI double over the head of Cabrera back in the first. St. Louis has wrapped out already six hits. 
Willis has thrown already 47 pitches. Mm. Line shot, base hit, right field. Hermida over to get it. One run will score. Here comes Taguchi. He's going to score. And just like that, the Cardinals have a 6 0 lead. Well, we talked about it last time when Dontrell left the game. The crowd, for the first time I could remember, booing the D train as he came out of the game. The boos have started already. And as you said, he would be the first to admit he has not pitched well, given up six runs already to the Cardinals. Ludwig now. Strikeout victim. Back in the first. Runners at the corners. And still only one out in the second inning. Did not go. It's 2 and 0. Oh. Boy, frustrated Dontrell Willis. He just doesn't have the rhythm going. He tried to slow things down, it looked like tonight. But a lot of pitches are getting a lot of the plate. And when Dontrell's at his best, and for him to be at his best, he has to find the corners. Remember, with Wes Obermuller sent down. And Young Young Kim in the rotation. The Marlins really don't have a natural long man. A, a sixth starter, if you will, a guy that in a case where a, somebody gets hurt or a pitcher is ineffective in the early innings to come in and give you four or five innings. And to me, you have to have that guy. You have to have somebody like that. Popped up. And out of the reach of Jacobs. Because if you don't, you're going to blow out that bullpen again which is uh, probably what's going to happen tonight if Dontrell doesn't uh, straighten it out and, and at least give Freddie five innings. On Sunday the Marlins used four relievers in a 5 3 win over Washington. The 3 2 Ludwig line shot back to Dontrell knocks it down picks it up runner coming home out there Jacobs throw home Olivo tag got him. A double play the hard way. One, three, two with Pujols thrown out on a quick catch and tag by Olivo. Even the Cardinals out are loud right now. The Marlins got a couple of them on this unique double play. Our checkers double play, home of the double drive through. Well, it took a, a line shot, but knocked down by Dontrell alertly. Took a peek at second base and a nice throw by Jacobs to get pool holes. Pool holes waited until Dontrell threw the ball to first. Took off to the plate, but Jacobs nailed him with a good throw. Pool hole slides, he's safe. So the Marlins are going to try to climb out of this hole, a 6 0 hole, against Kip Wells, Willingham, Hermita, Olivo. And then a strike from Wells. Who if he pitches to his ERA the Marlins have a good shot here. Because his ERA is over six. Well a little unusual for Wells he has the third lowest run support in the major leagues. He doesn't know how to act with six runs up there. Mahalam, Hill, Wells. Hammer. A base hit. Time now for the Just for Men stay in the game play. Last night, Rick Vandenhurt called up from AAA and stepped in in a big spot and had a nice night. Six strikeouts, five shutout innings, threw a lot of pitches early and needed help from his bullpen. But he got win number three in the big league. Stay in the game with Just for Men hair color. There he is. There's the Herc sitting down, relaxing there behind Todd Linden.
And just the fact that he's still here is a pretty good sign that uh, he's probably going to get another start. Armida three hits in the series. Rolled up the middle. Eckstein hustles it to Miles, who turns it over for a double play. Our Geico quote of the night from Rick Vandenhurt. I know what I have to do out there. The third time, I have a lot more experience than the first time and the second time up. You know, we talked about that last night, Rich, how he, he has matured and he's learned each time he's gone down and come back up, and he understands the situation. Olivo now. Miguel 0 for 4 in the series. Got the first night of the series off when Byung Young Kim started. Nice pick by Ryan. And the Marlins are done quickly. They get their first hit, but that's erased by a double play. Cardinals up 6 0. Third inning, Dontrell Willis will try to get it together here. He uh, has not been sharp tonight. Two runs in the first, four runs in the second. And he drops in a strike to Yadier Molina with Aaron Miles and Brendan Ryan to follow. Six runs, seven hits for St. Louis. Willis has struck out three. He's walked two, one of those intentional. That was Albert Pujols to load the bases. And that didn't work out so well because Juan Encarnacion chased home two with a two run single. Encarnacion has driven in three in this ball game. Yeah, it's a big night for him. He has a double and a single along with those three RBIs. So Taguchi has two hits, two runs, and two RBIs. And Molina. Pulls it in the hole, Hanley around it. And an off balance throw makes the play. And here comes Aaron Miles. Well, if you want to break things down even further with Dontro Willis, and I know you touched upon this his last start, it's the difference between lefties and righties. And you don't know, normally. There is a difference, but I don't remember it in the last couple of years that I've been here, Tommy, of, be, of it being this big a difference. Yeah, as, uh, as great as it is this year. The 1-0 pitch, foul back. Willis against lefties coming in. 133. Look at that. And, and no home runs allowed to a left-hander. Yet, most clubs load up their lineups with righties when Don Trell goes to the mound. And you see the righties hitting 318, and that figure has gone up. And it goes up with that one as the switch hitting Miles punches it into right field. Fish Friday, a couple days away. And you can take advantage of the four for 54 pack with the Marlins and the Reds at 705. Celebrate Christmas in July. All fans get a Marlins All Star poster presented by Franklin Communications. 100 posters will be autographed for Scratch Off Friday, presented by Metro PCS and the Miami Herald. Ladies come early for Ladies Night, presented by Napa Auto Care Centers. 1877 Marlins. Brendan Ryan. I noticed Don Trell is, is trying to adjust. He's trying to work in his breaking ball, his change up a little bit more, because the Cardinals have been very aggressive tonight on the fastball. Ryan takes inside. Tommy, maybe more than any other successful team, Cardinals won a World Series last year. They went there three years ago. If there's a need, Tony La Russa and Walt Jockney, their general manager, they will fill it from within into right field. Well, what a, a great approach tonight, too, 
by the Cardinal hitters. Brendan Ryan's got two hits and, and Ryan's a great example. I mean how many times have we seen the Cardinals over the last few years when a guy goes down or someone's injured or there's a hole be it a, a John Gall or a John Rodriguez or a Brendan Ryan guys that have come up from the minor leagues they'll plug in they're there for a month they'll hit 280 they'll make the plays and life goes on and I'll throw this at you who else does that the Atlanta Braves do that so well themselves but a couple of right handed hitters miles a switch hitter with not a lot of power and they've stayed back and they've taken Dontrell the other way miles is base hit Ryan's base hit to Gucci double down the right field line. So a good approach tonight too from the Cardinal hitters. I'll bet the wheels are turning in Tony La Russa's baseball cap right now with runners at the corners and one out. Obviously the Marlins are hoping that Kip Wells hits a ground ball up the middle. There's Jose Okendo a very versatile Cardinal in his days as a player. Yeah I'm just looking at Carnacion's uh, uh, Two RBI single was the other way. Well, so the Cardinal hit hitters have really stayed back and taken a lot of base hits to the opposite field. Okendo. You talked about the coaching staff Tony's had. Okendo's been with him a long time. Dave McKay over at first base. Dave Duncan, the pitching coach. And of course the uh, hitting coach in St. Louis is a name that Marlin fans are familiar with and I asked uh, he's had a nice day I asked Colin McRae if, if dad asked for any video before the uh, before the series started and Colin <laughs> laughed and said yeah right Hal McRae the hitting coach for the Cardinals Colin McRae of course the Marlins video coordinator and a guy who has learned a lot probably doesn't have a whole lot to say with decisions I'm sure helps in some ways the bench coach Joe Patini has been with the Cardinals a long time Don trail gets the strikeout of Kip Wells and a chance to get out of this inning without giving up a run but he's got to get uh, David Eckstein out which is an easy. And Dontrell, when he makes his first pitch to David Eckstein, it'll be number 70 in the game. I thought a very good question that uh, Craig Vintervini asked Eckstein and Marlins on deck. Eckstein, that was a great interview, by the for, way, too. For the second year in a row by Sports Illustrated, voted as the, uh, the players voting in that poll as the guy that gets the most out of the least amount of talent, a, a so called overachiever. And Eckstein said, you know, I'm, that's okay. I'm proud of that. But you know what? <laughs> Overachieving should be a talent. Getting the most out of what you have should be a talent. Yeah, there should be more overachievers. Eckstein goes down after being hit by Willis. Yeah, this breaking ball. Just takes off and catches Eckstein. Looked like it got him on that back leg. Boy, another guy right there, Barry Weinberg, a longtime major league athletic trainer. He's been with La Russa from the Oakland days. Yes, he has. been together a long time, too. Here's the poll. It's a player's poll from Sports Illustrated. Eckstein, Moyer, Council, Friel, and Carroll. Out of 413 major league players polled, most from the least talent. But again, I guess it's how you qualify talent. Yeah, it's a good list. Jamie Carroll, he's always been on that list. Ryan Friel, we'll see this weekend when the Reds come to town. See, I think Friel athletically may have more more talent than those guys. Yes, I yeah, mean, I he think. has more talent than. The next nine and Jamie Carroll. Right. And Moyer. And well, yeah. <laughs> I'm excluding the pitcher. <laughs> he's on that because he's 44 years old. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to put Friel on that list, you know, another guy that probably deserves some votes is wearing a Marlins uniform is playing second base. He's a Mexican. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Friel runs well. Friel has stolen over 30 bases the last three years for yep. Cincinnati. 
Ground ball. There's a Meziga. And Dontrell Willis gets out of that third inning without giving up a run. Six nothing Cardinals. Dolphin Stadium tonight where the St. Louis baseball Cardinals are on top of the Florida baseball Marlins and Eric Reed stands in against Kip Wells they always used to have to make that distinction in St. Louis when the old football Cardinals although the football Cardinals were certainly down a few notches from the baseball Cardinals yeah they were the, yeah, uh, they were. Those old St. Louis, Louis is a baseball town. And those St. Louis football Cardinals didn't win much of anything while they were there. Certainly not a Super Bowl like the Rams. Jim Hart. Jim Hart, quarterback, yeah. Dan Deerdorf. Anil Lomax. Here's the 2 0 pitch. It's one of the few stadiums where the football team would come out to practice after a baseball game, though, in that old um, multi purpose. Yeah, Bush I, I remember being there one time and a lot of us talking to uh, Otis Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Reed trying to get on. He fouls it back. Counts two balls and two strikes. Reed getting the start in center field. The cascading effect of a Dan Ugla night off, which hasn't happened all year long, has moved to Mezica. Into second base and Reed into center field. One down. Show some support for your favorite Marlin players. Join a Marlins player group night. Join Josh's Hammers, Hanley's Heroes, Ugla's Uglies, or Cabby's Corner. Or Hutton's Honchos. Tickets start at just $15 and include an official t shirt with your favorite player. Visit the promotions page at FloridaMarlins.com or call 305 626 SAVE. Here's Dontrell Willis. Hey, we do have Hutt's Hangout on that's, the weekend. That's right. Hutt's Hangout. You donate an awful lot of tickets every year, and uh, I'm, I'm matched by uh, FSN. And so we get lots of tickets for a lot of kids on uh, Sundays. Nice. So thanks to the folks at FSN for making the uh, the match. Hanley's on deck. He's three and zero. Oh. Two for four in his career against Wells. This is one of those games, Rich, and, and we've seen it happen a, a few times this year. When the Marlins get down early, I think this is one of those games you, you need those veteran guys, and the Marlins don't have a lot of veteran guys, to, to get things created, get things going on the bench. There's a lot of time left in this game to come back and win a game just because you're down 6 0. It's one thing if you're down 6 0 in the seventh inning, but here we are in the bottom of the third inning. Well, they need to make Kip Wells throw some pitches. He's at 32 pitches. Dontrell's at 74. Well, and as you pointed out, you have a guy out there with an ERA over six. Who didn't get past the second inning in his last start when he was clobbered by the Phillies 13 to three. Well, he gave up eight hits and six runs. Phillies got beat today in Los Angeles. They were tired from all the hitting last night 5-4 <laughs> though Ryan Howard hit another homer his 25th Wow, he hit two in that game last night Willis takes down low Wells not pleased he thought he had a strikeout and that's the second walk issued by the 30 year old right hander you know another thing I thought was interesting in baseball yesterday we talked about that, that wild game 
the Phillies had in Los Angeles with the two guys getting five hits Aaron Rowan and Shane Victorino Michael Young of the Texas Rangers also had a five hit game so there were three guys yesterday in the major leagues with five hit games doesn't Te happen too often Texas themselves didn't even have five hits today as Oakland shut them out six to nothing well lo and behold Oakland has not been playing well and that snaps a nine game losing streak and he's 0 for 1. He flied out back in the first. The other thing about a game like this is that you you can't. It, yeah, it's nice. You can get back in it with a home run, but you can't rely on that home run. You need to rely on two or three hits in a row, build yourself up a big inning, then maybe get a long ball. Hanley steps out. Boy, Wells has just slowed the pace down, which is absolutely amazing. He's the one with a 6 0 lead. You can see the fewest amount of big innings in the National League. But if the Marlins can put together a bunch of little innings, that would work as well. Well, part of that is because of the high amount of strikeouts for the uh, Marlins and not having those. Situational innings where you, you put together three or four singles, maybe throw in a double. Well, the Marlins are, are staring across the diamond at one of the great situational hitting teams yeah. in baseball. And I think we've seen that tonight in the Cardinals. Hanley with a big swing, but a soft pop up. Ludwig coming in makes the catch. Ludwig, one of those rare baseball players that hits right handed and throws left hand. Ricky Henderson, one of them. Yeah, probably the most famous. But not many. Many uh, hit left handed and throw right handed. But uh, very few major leaguers uh, throw left handed, as Ludwig is a left hander out there, but he hits right handed. Don't ask why. Don't email us. We had over 450 emails last night. Oh, you know, there was one I forgot, I'll, and we'll try to do it during the break. The uh, question, more major league players from the Netherlands or New Mexico? New Mexico. What do we have? Seven from the Netherlands. There's Ryan Ludwig, and there is Rick Vandenberg, one of those seven. Well, in the dugout, we have one from the Netherlands and one from New Mexico, right? Cody Ross if in fact Cody is here he may be playing for Jupiter oh, again. Okay. well but in spirit in spirit yes curveball Amezaga slaps it up the middle and Miles will step on the bag and the Marlins leave another runner and stay down to Kip Wells in the card six nothing. Dolphin Stadium where the Marlins are in a 6 nothing hole right now in the top of the fourth inning. Albert Pujols coming up. Dontrell Willis gave up a couple in the first. Three consecutive hits, a Sotaguchi single. This man had an RBI double. And then Juan Encarnacion followed the Pujols hit with an RBI double of his own. Two-run double by Sotaguchi in the second. And Encarnacion had a two-run single to finish it off so six runs for the cards and it's popped up towards the seats and Tommy I'm happy to report that FSN Florida can project a winner in the state of New Mexico. Ah, Good. I'm looking at a list that looks like 18 20 guys. Give me a couple names off there. Steve Onaveros. Steve I used to be with the Giants. Mm -hmm. Randy McCammon. Ralph Kiner. Kiner's corner. He was born in Santa Rita, New Mexico. You know, they just had a, a wonderful night at Shea Stadium for Ralph Kiner, honoring the longtime Hall of Famer, now who's been broadcast for years since day one. Who would have thought that he's from New Mexico? Would not have known that. I fly 
Why? I wonder where the duck is from. Golden Pond, maybe? The duck adapts. Who <laughs> holds the two anywhere? The Cardinal record for leadoff home runs. Oh, that's a good one. Cardinal record leadoff home runs. Think of the great leadoff men. Willie McGee comes to mind. Or did he hit second or did Coleman lead off? Uh, Coleman led off and didn't hit that many home runs. I'm sure there were some times Willie McGee did. I don't think Eckstein is uh, in the chase. I think it's one of those we may have to go back into Cardinal history. Ground ball in the left field. Boy, even the balls that aren't hit that hard are finding holes. And how about Encarnacion, three for three in the game. And you can hear the crowd right now voicing their displeasure. 11 base hits for St. Louis. And here comes Freddie Gonzalez. You know, any other baseball town, this really wouldn't be that much of a uh, an issue, but we just haven't heard it with Dontrell here at Dolphin Stadium. And Willis has given up six runs now in three plus innings, 11 hits. And here's our Maroney call to the bullpen. When you need a car, truck or van. I will say this when Juan Encarnacion singled the left, we heard the boos here, but as Dontro Willis exited, there were as many cheers as there were boos. Yeah, there was some applause, uh, light, lightly as it uh, might have been, but uh, less boos actually. So Raniel Pinto will come and take over and have a listen. Guy who's as frustrated as anybody, Dontrell Willis. So here's Pinto trying to put this thing back together. Ludwig goes after the first pitch, pops it up. Olivo, Jacobs, and look out, everybody. Miguel Olivo just came right in your living room. Yeah, you, you knew he wasn't going to stop, and he wasn't looking for snaps. in your living room right at Craig Craig the cameraman look at, look at everybody get out of the way Craig, well, he kept the shot you know I'm just thinking with Dontrell rich and and we forget this sometimes Dontrell's 25 he's had a lot of success he's been the rookie of the year been a 20 game winner. He's been an all star runner up in the Cy Young. This is really the first time he has gone through a period like this. And so far, he hasn't been able to turn it around and make that adjustment. Good changeup. And a good start for Reniel Pinto. Pinto's ERA has melted down to 3.86. And you even go back further, you look at the numbers that Dontrell had in the minor leagues when he was coming up with the Cubs. I mean, incredible. He, he had success everywhere. But this is the first time that he's had a string of failures and has gone this long without winning a game and has had struggles. I would suspect that you look at uh, just about every successful pitcher's resume in baseball. Mm -hmm. You're going to find a month or two stretch where things did not go well. Absolutely. And it's the ones who deal with it, and I truly do think Dontrell will deal with it positively. Ground ball, Cabrera on the bag, fires across. Reniel Pinto out of the bullpen gets three quick outs, and the Marlins head to the bottom of the fourth. Down 6 0 against the Cardinals. Florida Marlins Baseball and Sun Sports is brought to you by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. Gatorade, it's in Major League Baseball. Is it in you? And by Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. Tonight, the Marlins and the Cardinals under the light of the moon. And Dolphin Stadium as well.
Miguel Cabrera, Mike Jacobs, Josh Willingham. Coming up against Kip Wells, who so far has been a mystery. A Willingham single has been it. Boy, the bad news, uh, Rich, is that Dontrell with the six runs that uh, he allowed, 11 base hits, his ERA now has gone over five, 5.13. Cabrera takes a breaking ball outside. Wells was very cautious with the Cabrera and got out in front of him and then kept bending breaking balls outside and lost him. Couple walks for Wells. Cabrera hits that one to left center, hits it pretty well. Taguchi going back, won't get it. One hop off the wall, Miggy digging for two. And he's got himself a double, and that's why Kip Wells was cautious with Cabrera in the first. 24 doubles for Miguel Cabrera extends his hitting streak now to eight straight ball games. Breaking ball backed up, slider kind of backed up, and Miggy <laughs> just backed on it and got it in that gap. Taguchi covers a lot of ground, couldn't catch up to that one. So Miguel starts things here in the fourth with a nice double. Here's Jacobs. Pulls it on the ground, and Cabrera will trot to third base. And Jacobs is out. Apply! Leadoff man who's hit the most homers in Cardinal history. I'm kind of curious to see this end. Apply! Why, it's Lou Brock. Ah, uh, yeah. 21. All those years with the Cardinals, Hall of Famer, 3,000 hits. We should have guessed. Ricky Henderson has the all time record. Here's Willingham. How did we not guess Lou Brock? Come on, I, shake yourself. Hey, you're right. You know, if we were in St. Louis, we would have looked around the we, ballpark. We would have seen the name Lou yeah. Brock's yeah. name. We might have seen Lou Brock. Comes yes, out of the ballpark right. a lot. <laughs> he wouldn't need one of those umbrellas. Remember he had that uh, umbrella business? Yeah. I forget which uh, stolen base it was. It was a record breaker, though. It was a, it was a big one. And it was against the Phillies of my... my uh, my brother-in-law, Dick Ruthman, was on the mound when he stole it. But the problem was they had a huge ceremony. <laughs> there was about a, a 10 minute break and he was steaming. <laughs> he didn't do what um, what Eric Shaw did when he gave up Rose's big hit. Remember Shaw sat down on the mound? He, probably, he just sat down, that's right, I do remember that. Cabrera waiting at third for deliverance right now. And Josh Willingham trying to do the uh, delivering. Singled in the second. Ground ball. Ryan. Ah, oh, Cabrera. Can he make it back? Out. Well, I knew what the intention was, but down 6 nothing, it just didn't work. Miguel figured, well, the third baseman, Brendan Ryan, is going to pick it. I'm going to take a couple steps. He's going to throw to first, but Ryan just kept looking at him. As long as he continued to look at him, Miguel needed to hold his ground, but he kept sneaking toward the plate, and then all of a sudden Ryan reacted and went back to the bag. And Ryan is hurt. You know, we talked about him filling in for Scott Rowland. For the most part, Brendan Ryan has been a second baseman shortstop. He hasn't played a lot of third base, but he showed good instincts. It looked like he was in there. And boy, I tell you what, looked like Miguel's hand might have gotten there. That was a close play. But it he shouldn't even be that close. No, you're down six yeah. nothing. You know, to Ryan's credit, he didn't just pick the ball and and 
give up a run and, and just throw to first base and get the out. He continued to look at Miguel and reacted and went back to the bag and got him. So instead of a runner at third base and two outs for Hermita, Willingham's at first. And Hermita, who bounced into a double play, up here in the bottom of the fourth. And a strike from Kip Wells. You know, Wells is one of those guys that uh, you hear the type of surgery and you, and you think, how can he still be pitching? And he had, had last uh, March, had a blocked artery in his right arm. They take a vein from the leg and transplant the arm, and here he is back out pitching in the major leagues. I think Doug Brocale of the Padres had that surgery a, a year or two ago. I think Woody Williams has had that surgery. Years ago, guy would just say, My arm's numb. Can't pitch anymore. Up the middle. Busy night for Miles as he throws out Hermita. Marlins got a runner to third, but that didn't last long. And it's 6 0 Cardinals. Florida Marlins Baseball está disponible en español via SAP y es presentado por KFC. It's been all Cardinals so far. Fifth inning. Aaron Miles. Brendan Ryan, Kip Wells, and Reniel Pinto misses inside. Miles is kind of an Eckstein type guy. Not all that big. Takes a good healthy cut. It started a lot of games second base last year. And yeah, with Eckstein uh, injured, Ronnie Belliard was brought in. And with the job that Miles did, Belliard. Kind of became expendable. You know, one guy who I don't think we've mentioned the first couple of nights of this series, who had a very good postseason, Jeff Weaver, who a lot of people thought that there's where you really think about the pitching staff for the Cardinals. Obviously can't do anything about the injuries with Chris Carpenter and Mark Mulder. But they did not sign Jeff Supon, who was a free agent, nor did they sign Jeff Weaver. Now Weaver has had his ups and downs with Seattle. But I don't think they wanted to pay him eight million dollars a no, year. Which and is rightfully so, yeah. But Seattle paid him. All right. Chevy Road ahead. Reds tomorrow, Reds on Friday in high definition, I might add, in high definition on Saturday, Sun Sports on Sunday, and then Tommy, we uh, hit the road. You think it's hot here in South Florida? Wait till we get to Arizona next Monday night, or Chevy Road Ahead. How about Ken Griffey Jr. coming to town for four games? Right now, 587 career home runs for Ken Griffey Jr., a certain future Hall of Famer. A first ballot Hall of Fame. And he has adapted. He's been playing right field this year for Cincinnati. As we told you earlier, the Reds win again 5 4. Adam Dunn hit his 26th. They're actually playing pretty good ball, I believe, 9 and 4 now under their new manager, Pete McCann. That was a 15 inning win over the Braves today. And so the Reds, uh, I mean, the Marlins have had to dip into their bullpen early in this one. You go 15 innings in Atlanta, you're going to have to dip into your bullpen as well. The Reds started the ball game with Aaron Harang, and for the Marlins, that's good news. They don't get Harang. Yeah, he pitched well today. No decision. A swing and a miss. We check in with Craig Mitterveni. Craig? Hey Rich, thank you very much. You know, this year, Dolphin Stadium in the past always known as a tough place to hit home runs. We saw last night a couple balls hit 
the center field. But the numbers are interesting this year because actually it has not been a very tough place when you look at the other parks in the National League. Look at this number. The Marlins are now tied for fifth. And not the Marlins, but I should say Dolphin Stadium of giving up 100 home runs. And you look at the top three, especially Philadelphia and Cincinnati, big home run parks. Then Milwaukee. Houston actually is a little closer. I think they're only a 102 uh, close to Florida. So you look at those numbers, you see, wow, what's the difference this year? Hey, maybe you could say a pitch here or there or some of the opportunities for the hitters have taken advantage of, too. We'll get back to that more when we return. All right, Renyo Pinto's cruising with the Marlins down 6 nothing. Cardinals in control, 6 nothing. bottom of the fifth. Let's go down, down below to Craig Minervini. Craig? All right, Rich, yeah, those numbers I think are shocking to most people because last year, again, the Marlins were 14th in the Dolphin Stadium in giving up most home runs. Now, one crazy theory, just thrown out there, some of our, our camera guys out in left field and center say they don't feel the wind coming in like they have in past years. And as you know, there's a big glass on one side and the other side going up as part of the new construction here at the stadium and that could be cutting off some of the wind we we noted in Philadelphia above that first level where it's wide open a lot of people say that's why that ball really carries almost like a jet stream going out I wonder if this is the reverse it's just a crazy theory who knows yet you really have to wait a couple of years to see but uh, so far to see the Dolphin Stadium as you see there going up to this point where it's almost fourth in the National League with a reputation of being a tough place to play and hit a home run. Interesting stuff. Craig, I, I think it's the greenhouse effect. <laughs> that, that was the other one espoused by theorists. I'm sure Nancy Grace will have something in this tonight. You know, Tommy, I know that you studied Bill James, the baseball abstract guy. I did not know that you followed Al Gore. The <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I, I have not gotten the uh, video. Here is Miguel Olivo with Eric Reed and the pitcher spot due up against Kip Wells bottom five Levo takes a big swing fouls it back you know right now because he's done such a good job looks like it's going to be Raniel Pinto Pinto's only thrown 16 pitches in two innings and with nobody warming up in the bullpen unless both of these guys get on right now it looks like it's going to be Pinto. Boy, Olivo swings at a pitch that bounces about two feet outside. And it's 0-2. Aaron Harang, as Tommy said, pitched well. Seven and two-thirds innings, just two runs, eight strikeouts. And then the bullpen came in for the Reds. Five relievers worked all the way through the 15th inning. John Coot Langus. Mike Stanton, David Weathers, Kirk Sarlis, and Mike Gosling ended up getting the win. The Marlins will see the Reds tomorrow night. And so will you. We promise. FSN Florida. I think in one of those innings, I believe the 11th, the Braves had they got a leadoff double from Chipper Jones. He, he stole third. He was at third base with nobody out. A Scott Rowland type play. I thought Scott Rowland went back to St. Louis. Boy, Brendan Ryan makes this one look easy. Down to one knee, both knees after a nice clean pick. Boy, just casually makes that play and gets the out. Eric Reed now has lined out. Marlins here in the bottom of the fifth, down six nothing, and the runs came early. For the Cardinals, two in the first, four in the second, knocking Dontro Willis out of the ball game early. Here's the 0 1. I will say this that shot you just saw tells an awful lot about. The makeup of Dontrell Willis. There are many, many pitchers in the game today who, if they'd been scuffling and then came out 
and got knocked around again, they wouldn't be in the dugout. They'd have iced their arm. They'd be in the clubhouse. Pujols, heck of a play to get Reed. And there's two down. On Super Saturday, when the Reds are here, Willie Chirino is in concert. Fireworks spectacular after the concert presented by Sitco. Now the first 5,000 cars get a Marlins gas can courtesy of Sitco. First 25,000 fans get a Marlins clapper courtesy of Popular Mortgage. Boy, that was a nice play by Albert Pujols, who, who is a very good first baseman. I don't know if he'll win a gold glove ever, but soft hands, good hands, picks the ball well, and made a nice play there to rob Eric Reed. Here's Pinto. Had the Marlins been able to get a couple base runners to start this inning, don't think we'd be seeing Pinto right now. Yeah, I think we would have seen a little activity, but right now he's he's helping Freddie Gonzalez out. He's going to take one for the team, try to get a couple of more innings, and that really saves that bullpen. Yeah, the hard part though. But then you'll lose Pinto for a couple of days. Yeah, with some big left-handed yeah. bats coming in for yeah, Cincinnati. Yeah, you, you think about Adam Dunn and Ken Griffey Jr. You're not going to be able to use Pinto. But he's the, you know one of the few guys in that bullpen who has the versatility to come in and throw three four innings when the Marlins desperately need it tonight. Wells misses Pinto looking for that ever elusive first major league hit. Well, he got his first major league win. Yeah he's 0 for 2 this year last year. Just won it back he was 0 for 1. Lee Gardner could give you a couple innings. Come to think of it, Lee Gardner will give you whatever you ask him to give you. <laughs> yeah, Wells. Kip Wells have a little uh, uh, difference of opinion with Ed Hickox, the home plate umpire. He didn't want to get too vocal with a six-nothing lead. And two outs in the bottom of the fifth. He gets tossed here. He doesn't get the win. <laughs> Chopper. Ryan throws in time. And the Marlins are done in the fifth. We've played five. Wells now qualify, so he can he can yell at him all he wants now. A little after dinner snack in the top of the sixth inning. With the Cardinals on top of the Marlins, six runs, 11 hits for the Cardinals. The Marlins without a run and just two hits. The Pinto will uh, keep on keeping on. Eckstein, Taguchi, and Pujols. This is a night, Tommy, where where we need those 450 emails we got last, last night. Oh, we, you know, tonight, though, we can talk about some of the uh, things going around baseball. We didn't have a whole lot of opportunities last night. That's true. Remember, we were mentioning the injury, the finger injury to Ben Sheets. He's going to be out four to six weeks. Pretty yeah. good blow to Milwaukee, but they've responded. They've played pretty well. They've won four straight. Yeah, they've got the, the Cubs certainly breathing down their necks. The Cubs beat the Giants today 12 to 1. That, Almost hit Eckstein. Carlos Zambrano is now 12 and 7. Matt Cain, the uh, young giant, is 3 and 11. Mm. Yeah, the Brewers are playing later tonight in Arizona. Ground ball to short, Hanley Ramirez. There's one out here in the sixth inning. Pinto is into his third inning of relief. Here comes So Taguchi. Arizona scoreless with the Milwaukee right now in the bottom of the second. And Arizona's a ball club. The Marlins are going to see here for four. 
I always like to give you those assignments too because I know you you've got that uh, computer going. Mm -hmm. Who you want? Well, one of our favorites going into tonight had had two straight four for four games, eight uh, consecutive base Wiggy. hits from Ty Wigginton. Wiggy. And so Tampa Bay hosting the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They're in the fifth inning, so we know he's been up maybe once, maybe twice. Wiggy was creeping up on 300 after all those hits. And he's in the lineup. But he's 0 for 2. 1-1 one, one in the sixth. So Wiggy. it ended at eight straight. Wiggy's 0 for 2. Well, have you had a chance to see the Angels play? Just a little bit. I, they, they have they have a, a just a solid team. All good right, pitching, good defense. The uh, the Angels. I mean, they've got uh, guys like Reggie Willits, Sean Figgins, Major is Turris. A lot of guys that uh, aren't big names, but are Mike Sosha type guys. They steal bases. They go from first to third. They're like the Twins. We saw the Twins and felt that the Twins were a, a National League type team. And the uh, Angels certainly fit that description as well. Managed by a, a National League player, Mike Sosha, who a lot of people thought would have been the Dodgers manager. No, I heard Vince Scully do a, a, a 10 minute soliloquy on that. In that there were some folks in the Dodgers organization that weren't sold on Sosha. Mm -hmm. and, and well, as only Vinny could do, he turned it into, you know, a nice uh, ironic twist that Here's Sosha down the freeway winning a world championship <laughs> when the Dodgers haven't won one since the late 80s. When Sosha, I believe, was there. Yes. Who holds? For the count one and two. And Carnacion's on deck. Pinto. It's a foul ball. You know, you look at some of the numbers that Albert Pujols has put up in his first six years. They, they they're incredible. I mean, he he's the only. When you hear this, you you have to have to read twice. The only major leaguer in history to ever have 30 or more home runs his first six years. In each of his first six years. You know what's amazing to me about Pujols? He was the 402nd player drafted in the 1999 <laughs> draft. And it didn't take him long to get to the big leagues. And that just shows you the inexact science that is the baseball draft. He went in the 13th round. Fastest ever in Major League history to get to 1,000 base hits. And 200 home runs. So all the talk about Barry Bonds and and yeah, A. Rod may surpass Bonds, but who knows where Pujols is going to go? 27 years old in his seventh year. Got him. Pinto strikes out Pujols. We check in with Craig Minervini. Craig, thank you, Rich. Here's what's being heard around the cooler. Brought to you by our friends. At Gatorade and also our friends McKenzie to my left when I come on here and Eric to my right. It's the giveaways. Great gi giveaway weekend. First of all, Friday, McKenzie, very nice. Price is right model style there. This is the all star poster, all fans Friday night. All right, Eric, tell us about Saturday. There we go, the gas can. All right, first of 5,000 and the clapper. Very nice. And then on Sunday, the cooler demonstrated beautifully. All right, the first 10,000 on the cooler. First 25,000 on the clapper that's Saturday. First 5,000 on the gas can. Good giveaways. And how about that all-star poster, guys? Look at that one. 
Huh? My, you know, Mike, wait, wait till my car hears that it's going to get a uh, giveaway. <laughs> does, that, does that clapper work like a sun pass? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's noisy. Doesn't know that. Go ahead, give him the clap. <laughs> Eric's from West Palm, McKenzie from Daytona. Good Marlin fans here out to the game tonight. Pinto misses outside to Juan Encarnacion. He's had quite a night. Look at that, three for three. Pinto's uh, longest outing this year, and if he gets an out here, this will be his longest outing, two and two-thirds. Longest ever in his career last year, back in August, uh, Reniel Pinto worked five innings against the Mets. He loses Encarnacion. That'll chase Taguchi down to second. And brings up Ryan Ludwig. The Yankees hot. Have won four in a row coming into play tonight. But Toronto on top. One nothing in the sixth inning. And that is uh, against the Rocket. Roger Clemens on the mound tonight for the Yankees. Boston trailing Kansas City six to four in the fifth. The Royals just put four on the board and are still hitting. Good breaking ball from Pinto. Here the Cardinals scored early and often two in the first four in the second. Lee Gardner in the bullpen getting ready. Well you called it. You knew we'd see Guardian in this game tonight. Count stays at 0 2. The Mets and the Padres play tonight. John Main, Greg Maddox. Well, the Mets uh, last night had another solid performance from El Duque. Seven innings, two hits, no runs in their uh, 7 0 win against San Diego. Beat Peavy. Jake, Jake Peavy was the losing pitcher. Colorado beat Pittsburgh. Jeff Francis is 10 and 5. We were talking about players from British Columbia last night and email Tuesday. Francis is another one. So he gets the win. He's 10 and 5. A 1 2. Ground ball. Handley. Easily to a Meziga. And so Raniel Pinto goes three scoreless innings out of the bullpen, but the Marlins got to start scoring some runs. They're down 6 nothing. Welcome back to the sixth inning, the Coors Light sixth inning. Time for the Coors Light cold blast. Hanley Ramirez in last night's ball game, sending that one out the exit sign there. Two run homer in the fifth inning, 417 feet. That was a Coors Light cold blast. The Marlins need a bunch of those right now. Kip Wells, who has done it on just 64 pitches, into the sixth inning. Hanley, Amezaga, Cabrera. Hanley tries to bunt. We have to go back to May 28th, the last time Kip Wells went six innings. We talked made, about a few relief outings he's had. And he made just nine starts last year. He had an injury filled season with the uh, Pirates and then the Texas Rangers. He was one of those guys, he was with the uh, White Sox and he came to the Pirates with Josh Fogg. And always remember Josh Fogg and, and Kip Wells always seemed to pitch good ball games against the Marlins when they were with Pittsburgh. Always figured he would end up in San Francisco. Well, he started at the University of Florida. 
Josh Fogg is with the uh, with the Rockies now. I think you're right. Yeah, I was thinking the other day the Marlins still have some teams that they've not seen at all. We'll see. We'll see Arizona on this road trip. We'll see San Francisco. But the Rockies are like a rumor. <laughs> Somewhere down the road, we'll see the Rockies. <laughs> I mean, I was looking the other day. We do not go to Colorado. We 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 see the Rockies. I think here before we go there. But we do not go to Colorado until the 14th, 15th, and 16th of September. That's a great time to go to Colorado. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the Rockies come to town here 31st of July and then August 1st and 2nd. But uh, yeah, they are still in the league. <laughs> and we will see them. They haven't defected. 3 <laughs> 2. Oh, Hanley is rung up. Hanley not happy. Here's a look. That's pretty close. Now, believe it or not, it's the first strikeout for Kip Wells in this game. That's a pitch that looked worse from behind the plate than it did from in front of the plate. And you know why? Because Molino had a reach for it. He, his target was kind of middle in, and he had to reach a little bit on the outer part. So here's a Mezigan. He's 0 for 2. Well, the fact that the Marlins haven't seen the Giants or the Diamondbacks or the Rockies kind of illustrates the First half schedule at the Marlins played very tough. I think it was like 70% of the uh, games were against teams above 500. They get a, a little more of a break in the second half. Of course, in the first half, they played the Padres and the Dodgers both twice. And those are the two teams that have kind of been out front in the National League West. But Arizona's not too bad, and Colorado has just pulled above the 500 mark. The Giants scuffling at 13 under. Opening play today in Barry Bonds. Boy, at this uh, at this pace, you might want to start buying tickets for right field when the Giants do come here. Did he even play today? He, he didn't play the first two games in Chicago. Chopper, Miles, quick flip. Press the sat button on your remote or your TV. Voila! Hi guys. Hey, Rich. Hey, Rich, Tommy, how you doing? Hey guys. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but the, the Marlins are trying to score a run here. We, we all need to, to concentrate really hard right now. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's all concentrate here. All right, here we go. Maybe a long ball. Maybe two runs will be hey, good. Hey, Cookie, I want, we wanted to get your take on Dontrell Willis. What do you see with him right now? Well, I, I don't think he's the same pitcher that we have seen before. As a matter of fact, I don't see his attitude on the mound. His control, his velocity goes down from 90 to 88 to 87, throwing a lot of off-speed pitches. I don't, I don't know. I hope that he's, uh, he's healthy, that he's all right. But it, he's not on the zone and getting ahead of the hitters. He's getting a, throwing a lot too many pitches. And he's been hit hard. I mean, he hasn't fooled any of the hitters from the Cardinals tonight. 11 hits in three innings. Something wrong. All right. Good Good take. Okay. Have a good one, guys. You too. Thank you. Bonds and the Giants won't, take, won't be here at Dolphin Stadium until sometime in August. Right? Yeah, the 17th, 18th, and 19th. I take it back. Bonds did play pinch hit last night, but is. Uh, Going into today, Bonds 0 for 21, 0 for his last 21. Did not play, did not play, did not pinch hit. Has leg issues, hamstring, shin splints. Here's the one two. Cabrera strikes out in a frustrating night for the Marlins, a night where they have just two hits against Kip Wells. Dolphin Stadium 6-0, the Cardinals on top of the Marlins. And in the seventh, Lee Gardner will take over. For Reniel Pinto, who pitched very well, Pinto went three innings in relief of Dontro Willis, did not give up a run, and gave up just one hit. 
Lee Gardner now has appeared in every game in this series uh, pitched two thirds of an inning the first game of the series remember last night started the ninth inning got a couple of outs and then Taylor Tankersley came in to finish out the uh, ball game and was able to get uh, Adam Kennedy on a ground ball to second so three nights in a row for Gardy. And as you said uh, whatever he's called on to do he's going to do it. Here's Yadier Molina. Yeah earlier in the ballgame we uh, relayed the conversation that uh, we had with Gardner about Ryan Ludwig and their their plight last year at uh, Toledo. Both having very good years but both stuck in a, in an organization that uh, was going to the World Series with the. Uh, Lots of talent with the regular players and uh, in the bullpen and the rotation. And uh, Gardner said, "Look, we all just decided let's we're going out there. We're going to play hard and not worry about it. And let's see if we could win the International League Championship. And darned if they didn't." And Gardner said, "We were we knew we weren't playing to get called up. A lot of times in the minor leagues, when when teams are in the postseason." There can be some bitter guys because they'd rather be in the big leagues getting paid big league money than be in the minor leagues in the postseason where they're just getting paid a portion of their minor league contract. But Gardner said we knew we weren't going up. We knew we weren't you know no one was getting uh, getting hosed so to speak. So they all went out there and they won the thing. Well Gardy with 30 saves. Nice 292 ERA in his 58 games for Toledo. Molina takes a gorgeous breaking ball for a strike. Our poll question this week. All right, second half is the topic. What do the Marlins have to do? What's most important in the second half? Improving the home record, reducing errors in the field, more consistency on the mound, or better discipline at the plate? Well, I guess one of them we could add on there is turning around Dontro Willis. That might be the uh, right in just like a uh, uh, Mezica was. Aaron Miles. Miles is singled walked struck out. Gardner delivers a strike it's one and one a lot of people uh, Tommy over the all star break. We're uh, trying to figure out. Where Alex Rodriguez is going to end up. It sounds like he's going to exercise the out clause in that contract, become a free agent again. And San Francisco was mentioned as a, a possible spot, which doesn't make a lot of sense when you add up the dollars and cents because I mean, the Giants are a team that pays the debt on their stadium. They paid for their entire stadium. And they're paying Barry Bonds. 16 17 million and with some incentive clauses that can get up to about 18 19 million. Well I'll tell you one of the thoughts on that though uh, that I've, I've read one of the thoughts is if, if Barry Bonds isn't back right if this is his last year uh, obviously that, that gives them 18 million to play with and they'll need more if they have uh, Alex Rodriguez but it replaces another huge superstar and you lose a Barry Bonds you get an Alex Rodriguez. Boy, it keeps it, things alive, but that ball club needs a lot, oh, a lot done to it. They are are old. They have a lot of veteran players, and as you pointed out earlier, they're not having a good year. And if Rodriguez gets what his agent is saying he will, you know, you're not talking about the $25 million contract, which was the uh, the ruination of the Texas Rangers for a while, but they're talking about $30 million or more or above that, and that's. Uh, I have a hard time seeing the Giants able to absorb that. Well, and when you think about it, too, there are only a three or four clubs that could. I mean, you hear hear the Angels mentioned. You hear the Red Sox mentioned as a team that might be interested in a Rod. Oh, wouldn't that be interesting? The team that's doing cartwheels are the Rangers because they were still and they are still paying. A pretty good portion of Alex Rodriguez's contract. So if basically, he, if he opts out of that contract, they're done. Oh yeah, oh, they're there they're will be a parade <laughs> in Arlington. <laughs> 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 I 
That'll be an interesting one to follow, though. Brendan Ryan at the plate. 0 2. Gardner's breaking ball. Working tonight. A couple strikeouts here in the seventh inning. Is your group looking for a special event? Call the Marlins Group Sales Department today. Special group rates. Let your group be part of the action. All groups of 20 or more on Mondays will receive half price tickets in selected seating categories. Call 305 626 SAVE today. Then there's there's another theory. I like this one. Okay. One hopper. We got plenty of time. We'll, we'll get to it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to save this one. This is a good one. Don't go away. Now, Mezuga flips it over. Rich, to don't go anywhere. I can't. I'm contractually obligated for another <laughs> two and a half innings. <laughs> Baseball on Sun Sports brought to you by Maroody. Hey, South Florida, when you need a car, truck, or van, who are you going to call? 1 877 Maroody. And by Checkers Double Drive Through, two drive throughs to get you through fast. The Cardinals jumped on the Marlins very quickly. Look at that. Two runs in the first, four in the second. And despite all the twisting and shouting, no runs from that point on. Well, once again, the bullpen's done a nice job. Green El Pinto, three shutout innings. Lee Gardner, last inning, had a couple strikeouts. Cardinals have struck out 10 times in this game, but Kip Wells has done his job. Now, the A Rod saga continuing. Okay. How about this theory? And, and I think this one we're just throwing out for the first time. A Rod to the Chicago Cubs if Mark Cuban. Bought that team. <laughs> Mark Cuban as a major league owner is an interesting concept. That, that is an interesting concept. Scary, but interesting. Here's Jacobs. Swing and a miss. I looked it up just for reference. The uh, Texas Rangers this year are paying, and now Alex Rodriguez this year. Is making 27 million dollars. The uh, Rangers are paying seven million dollars of that salary. Oh, so the Yankees are only dishing out 20. Yeah. Oh. But his contract is through 2010. So if he opts out of three years, that saves the Rangers 21 million at least. <laughs> One and two. Now I wonder if the Yankees would be bidders in that. Oh, I think so. I think Tom Hicks is going to call him too. So, well, he just sent that thank you email. Okay. Jacob strikes out, and here comes Willingham. All of a sudden, Kip Wells. Who had not struck anybody out. Billy well, got Andy Ramirez has struck out three of the last four hitters. Hammer Eckstein. And here comes Hermita. Washington beat Houston seven to six. I think Ryan Langerhans had a had a good day for the Nationals today. Jim Hawley, our director, that's uh, one of his favorite players. Mm -hmm. Luke Scott, Mike Lamb. Oh, I always get mixed up which one is which. They both homer. Scott is 11th, Lamb is 9th. You know, our director of this homestand, Mike Rubin, he's kind of made us forget about, well, not quite. We haven't quite forgotten Jim Holly, who will be back. <laughs> and our kudos to Mike Rubin for the nice job he's done this week. Who's Mike Rubin's favorite player? I don't know. Mike, who is your favorite player? 
He's thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is outside and it's two and one. <laughs> Mike Rubin's favorite player of all time. Thomas, George, Hutt. Mike trying to be politically correct because I said nice things about him. But a, a Phillies fan, Mike Rubin is. Actually, the truth he said is Cookie Rojas. How about that? That's good. Cookie Rojas is a lot of people's favorite player. Mm -hmm. Especially kids who grew up not only as Philly fans, but Kansas City Royal fans. We were, and it was really fun to see when we went back to Kansas City uh, a couple months ago. Maybe it was what was it a month and a half ago? Yeah, yeah. All of the Cookie Roja stuff in that uh, ballpark. Well, he's he's in the Kansas City Royals Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and they have uh, a couple of really nice displays at Kauffman Stadium. Of all the uh, Royals Hall of Famers. Cookie's going, what the heck is going on? <laughs> he can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing but good, Cookie. Yeah, tell him it's good stuff. The 3 2. On a couple hops, X time. <laughs> Kip Wells is throwing the game of the year. And he is shutting out the Marlins right now. 6 0. Dolphin Stadium. Cardinals six, Marlins nothing. I believe she had a marriage proposal on that big sign. David Eckstein, So Taguchi, Albert Pujols. Cardinals have had their share of injuries. They're waiting, not for Godot, but waiting for Jim Edmonds. Who uh, told me in a clubhouse he's uh, he's ex expects to be back soon. Saw Mark Mulder down in the uh, cage, just playing a little soft toss. Mulder on the disabled list as well. Chris Carpenter. Cardinals are in that situation. Uh, and it's similar to the Marlins situation if the Cardinals and we've heard this with the Marlins if the Cardinals can put on a little run. Eckstein in a right field base hit everybody hold on to your seats here comes we'll get back to that the but game summary first the game sum summary struggles of Don Carl Willis Albert Pujols with a base hit Encarnacion has had a had a nice ball game so to Gucci pokes a double another base hit by Encarnacion. Tough night for Dontrell Willis, but a nice outing for Raniel Pinto, helping out that bullpen with three solid shutout innings. The Marlins have not been able to solve the veteran Kip Wells. Wells, in his career with just three complete games, has an opportunity to complete a game and has never pitched a shutout at the major league level. Wow. I mean, he comes into this game, Kip Wells only one season in his career a winning season in 2003 with Pittsburgh he was 10 and 9. Yeah, his lifetime record coming in 26 games under 500. That one sent into the seats but amazingly we pointed out at the beginning of the game and it so often uh, how it happens with matchups his career ERA against the Marlins in, in, with a 3 3 record his career ERA 2.36. This is the 194th start of his career. Taguchi takes inside. Uh, you know, we're talking about the Cardinals and where they are with yeah, personnel. But, and, and to make that run, they need to make a run. The Marlins need to put together some kind of a run. But to do that, you have to throw out consistent starting pitcher night after night to put together a run. And the Cardinals have had trouble with that, and the Marlins have had trouble with that. Here's a rumor and conjecture and something that I've read for the last two months, and that is will Tony LaRusa be back? And will Walt Jockety be back, their general manager? And there are some that think this might be LaRusa's last year in St. Louis. 
by his choosing. And there was one rumor that had both he and Jockety at the end of the year going to Cincinnati together. Jockety to be the general manager and LaRusso to be the, well, the manager. Well, they've been a tremendous tandem. Walt Jockety has been, you know, you, you talk about top GMs over the last uh, 10 years. You, you throw in John Scherholz and then Walt Jockety is very close. I mean, and, and he's worked well with Tony LaRusso. Can't imagine St. Louis without Jockety. I can imagine them. I can see Tony uh, maybe deciding to leave on his own. But uh, I'd be surprised if Walt Jockety went anywhere. Well, he's just had an incredible run as a uh, Cardinal skipper. Been to six National League Championship Series, been to a couple of World Series, and of course, won it last year. You know, Walt Jockety has been their vice president general manager since October of 94. Jockety, of course, was in the Oakland organization under Sandy Alderson, I believe, when Alderson was the GM, when LaRusa was the skipper. And of course, Tony took over the Cardinals in 96 as the skipper. Those two brought with them a big slugger named Mark McGuire. We know Albert Pujols isn't going anyplace soon. They've locked him up to a long term contract. He's 27 years of age. Got a piece of it and stays alive. Yeah, they locked up uh, Albert to, to a contract. He signed through 2010 and an option, the club option, for 2011. I thought you were going to say like 2020. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you would understand that. By all accounts and everything that we've seen, having dealt with him, just an outstanding guy. He, he is. He is that one of the nicest men you're, you're going to talk to. Light does a tremendous a lot uh, for the St. Louis community. And I think he appreciates what it what it means to play baseball in a city like St. Louis. I told you the other day I, I was speaking with Ryan Franklin, one of their relief pitchers, and this is his first year as a St. Louis Cardinal, and he just he went on and on. He couldn't believe the uh, the fan support, the atmosphere in the town. In that ballpark, the organization. High pop. Jacobs makes the catch. Was it always that way, Tommy, when you played in, yeah. the, in this in yeah. the 60s St. Louis, and 70s? St. Louis was always a baseball town and enthusiastic crowds, uh, rarely booing their home players. Uh, they, they enjoy the game, they know the game, and they root for their team, and they've had some exciting baseball over the years. And it, it's always been said, as long as I can remember, and even more so, I think, in the last uh, maybe 10 years, for players who are free agents, St. Louis, if, if you want to go somewhere and be appreciated and, and play for a, a, a great bunch of fans, and they sell out, they're sold out every game this year, St. Louis would be one of the towns you'd consider. Encarnacion has three hits. 12,819 here tonight. Encarnacion fouls it back. They just handed us, hot off the presses, a news release in, on St. Louis Cardinal stationery, medical advisory, updates on Scott Spezio and Scott Rowland. Rowland had a cortisone injection in his left shoulder, and they think he will resume play within the next few days. Scott Spezio saw the team physician and an infectious disease specialist today. That's never good when you see that in the same sentence. The infection and inflammation in his left index finger has subsided considerably. 
that's good news. hit pretty well left field. Willingham going back to the track. Reaches, got it! What a catch by the hammer. Crashing into the wall. Well, I filed that one away. That's one of the best catches Josh Willingham has ever made. One of the lone highlights for the Marlins. Appreciate that. What a nice play by Hammer. All out in a six-nothing ball game, back to the wall, and what crashed into that wall as he made the catch. He looked like Brian Downey. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Back in the, his Angel days, big strapping ex uh, catcher who played left field for the and played left field like a catcher. Yeah, he, he had many <laughs> run-ins with the left field wall. Olivo nearly falls over going after that Wells fastball. Olivo leading it off. Eric Reed and then the pitcher spot due up here in the eighth. Kip Wells breaking ball misses outside. Now Wells' pitch count is up a little bit now to 93 here in the eighth. Yeah, we talked about it. The uh, he had a couple of seven inning outings way back in April. That's uh, that's been it. Hey Tommy, what do you got? Some updates? Guess who just hit a home run, Tommy? Ty Wiggins. Yeah. <laughs> Tampa Bay with a 7 1 lead over the Angels. Wiggy hit his 14. <laughs> having a big series. <laughs> 2 2 pitch. It's up. And the count full. Cardinals scored their runs in the first and the second. Since then, zeros for everybody. Toronto still hanging on to a one nothing lead in the Bronx. Kansas City holding on to a 6-5 lead over Boston at Fenway in the seventh. Down goes Olivo. Sean Markham pitching for the Blue Jays against Clemens. Check in with Craig Minervini. Craig? Hey, thanks, Rich. Talking to Eric Reed before the game, he said he was really struggling at AAA. One of the things that helped him in the first 50 at Batches that was hitting about 150 was bunting. He said he got a bunch of bunt hits that got it going. Also gave him a lot of confidence. Now, in this game, he knows that Brendan Ryan only had 10 professional innings at third base, but he is so far in at third in a situation like this. He said, I was thinking about bunting third, but, you know, I may drag it. That's a lot of the success I had was on drag bunts. Nonetheless, it's been a little bit of a weaponry for him. And it helped him get to almost 300 back in Albuquerque. I'll bet you Tony Larusa called up the uh, Memphis ball club. Memphis in the Coast League, isn't it? Along with Albuquerque, I know they realigned. Yeah, they realigned. Um, they used to be. I'm not sure. Let me check on that. But I'm sure Larusa got the uh, minor league scouting report as well. Guys, guys seem to show up. Yeah, the Memphis Redbirds. Okay, they're in the Coast League. In the Coast League, one of their uh, star hitters. I believe, if not leading the yeah, Coast League, right, right at the top of the Coast League in home runs, former left-handed pitcher Rick Ankiel. Quite an interesting story. Yeah, and a lot of people are wondering why the, the Cardinals, who are you know, struggling to score runs, don't call him up because he's hitting home runs right now. And it's a kind of a contractual... Yeah, he, it's one of those situations where, first of all, he's playing the outfield and they want him to get as many at bats as possible. Here's a guy who was a pitcher mm -hmm. and he hasn't had the opportunity. He's playing center field and I've heard he's playing center field extremely well. He has a strong arm and they just want to and the other thing is that if they call him up they want him to play every day 
if Edmonds comes back that's not going to happen and he doesn't have any options left so they couldn't send him back so there's a good chance they'll bring him up uh, certainly in September but more than likely not before then sometimes it's not good to have options left Sometimes it is good to have options left. That one hit uh, Linden in the back of the leg. And so Todd is aboard. Boy, Hanley with a uh, maybe his last chance to keep his hitting streak alive. Fortunately, I think that ball just grazed Todd Linden. Tampa Bay leads the Angels, by the way, 7 to 1 in the seventh. Mets and Padres about a half hour from starting in San Diego. Brewers Diamondbacks 2 2 in Milwaukee in the fourth. Kevin Mench is home for the Brewers. Hanley takes a strike. Oh, little action down there. Troy Percival. Guy that used to throw really hard. Oh, one chopper foul. Kind of interesting with Percival warming up in the Cardinal bullpen. Kevin Gregg. Loosening up in the Marlins bullpen, a couple of guys who were together at one time in the Angels bullpen. And Percival had a, a big influence oh, he did. on Greg's career. Probably have a chance to talk about that if Percival comes in, but Kevin Gregg had some really great things to say about Troy Percival. Ground ball. Ryan on a knee across. Kip Wells is through eight, and he's dealing a two hit shutout. Six nothing, Cardinals. Well, the Marlins bullpen pitched very well tonight. Reniel Pinto, his three innings. Lee Gardner. His two innings. And here is Kevin Gregg. Yeah, and talking to uh, Kevin Gregg about his experiences uh, two years in that Angels bullpen when Percival was the closer and the, the things that, that Kevin was able to learn. The thing about Percival, I think our perception is that this hard thrower. But he said Percival was a very cerebral pitcher and taught him how to watch hitters swings and that'll tell you how to pitch him. and the example Kevin gave was he said that helped him the other night against Austin Kern and the Nationals he said I threw a fastball by him he, he said he did not have a good swing I threw three fastballs right by him and you know watching a hitter swing a lot of times is going to tell you. Okay, he can't get to the the, break, the breaking ball, or he can't get to the fastball. And he said Percival was very instrumental in working with him on that. That's a pretty talented bullpen. Those years with the Angels. Ball skips by. Olivo picks it up. Fires the first in time. All right, our Papa John's delivery of the game. Watch and listen to this. The hammer. Get the new Smokehouse Bacon and Ham Pizza for just $11.99. Full flavored, authentic taste. Only Papa John's can deliver. Call or pick or click PapaJohns.com to taste it. I'll bet you if we go out there tomorrow, there's like a, an imprint in the wall left over. Got to be a dent or something. And thankfully, Hammer came away from that to help it. Yeah, he talked about that Angels bullpen. Brendan Donnelly, Scott Shields, guys like that were down there with Percival, with Greg. Oh. 
of course Francisco Rodriguez who came on the scene late in that world championship year in 2002. He was saying the other thing he learned uh, because he used to be Kevin used to be a starter and he said a starter you can work the strike zone maybe throw some pitches middle work out that as a reliever you come in you have to hit corners and you can't do that you can't get away with that as a relief pitcher. Don't have the corner time. just like that. Yeah. yeah. Don't have the time. Well, remember we were talking about how popular Cookie yeah. Rojas is in Kansas City. Sue Rayson just sent us a, a missive and said, "Guess what? In oh, Kansas well, City in August, there. Cookie Rojas bobblehead." <laughs> Come on, Cookie. Look at the monitor. Oh, yeah. There it is. <laughs> Yeah, Cookie's got uh, his uh, airline yeah, ticket. He's uh, flying into uh, awesome. flying into Kansas City. Now it's going to be a great night. Do you think? And I'll, I'll bet Freddie Patek is going to be there. Got his, to be his old well, double play partner. Yeah. 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 See, he turned to the double play. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's got to be there. <laughs> I wonder if Patek will convince Freddie to take a run out and jump in the fountains. <laughs> That we relayed that story earlier in the uh, year. If you missed it, we'll then. have to send Frank Ford for that one. Yeah, yes, we will. <laughs> Live footage. And that the first time the Royals made the postseason, Cookie dashed out and jumped in the fountain out in left field. One and two. We had an email last night we didn't get to. I remember reading it just in the inning ended quickly. There was a question about Kevin Gregg's glasses and if he was just wearing them for sunglasses or if they indeed were prescription and they are. One of the lenses is a corrective lens in there. Said it, especially at night it helps him see the signs. That? It helps him see the corner of the plate which he just hit with that fastball. Another big night from the bullpen but the Fisher down six nothing. Florida Marlins baseball and Sun Sports tonight brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. And by Rico, move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. That kind of tells the story just looking at that line score. The two hits the Marlins mustered off of Kip Wells, who's no longer in the ball game. And one of the comeback stories of the year Troy Percival who has been out of the game after arm troubles seemingly ended his career and he throws one up there at 91 well at the peak of his career and it's been a good one in 2002 and that was a big year for the Angels He's four and one he had 40 saves and an ERA of one point nine two. So eight and nine years he had a stretch of 30 or more saves. So this was a consistent closer. Ford time all star. How about that how many I'm <laughs> just thinking as I was reading this how many times has a guy thrown out a ceremonial first pitch of a season which Percival did for the Angels this year. And then made a comeback. <laughs> he must have had good stuff. <laughs> Apparently, there was a Cardinal scout at the game. I feel sorry for the uh, the guy who went out to catch that ceremonial first pitch. Amezaga called that on strikes. You know, knowing him so well, Kevin Gregg. When I asked Kevin, I said, "What, what do you think?" With Percival, why you know why do you think he came back? <laughs> he said he said he loves to build cars. He said he builds cars. He said I probably just got tired of building cars. <laughs> or he needed some parts. And he needed a little capital to, to get those parts. Cabrera into the seats. Miguel's doubled, walked and struck out. See Kevin telling the two young guys, Bermuda and Ugla, about Troy Percival. 
Cabrera in a sliding try, but no catch by Taguchi, who's quite an outfielder. Won many gold gloves in Japan, and he's, he's still trying to sell it. Yeah. He said, appeal. Ask the other guy. You know, the ball was hit so hard. Second base umpire's job is to get out there and make the call. Joe West got out there as quickly as possible, but this ball is stung so hard on the line. Taguchi comes over. I'll tell you what, that's pretty close. Here's a better look. No. Nope. Yeah, think it's short hop. I think it did. Watch it bounce up into the glove. So uh, turned out to be a good call by Joe West, even though he couldn't get there. He got there as quick as he could to get a little better angle. Taguchi still can't believe it, but how about the Marlins have three hits and Miguel Cabrera has two of them. And Miguel saying, you know what, if he caught it, fine, it's okay, I'll take it. I've been robbed enough times. Jacobs now is 0 for 3. His eight game hitting streak in jeopardy. I can remember watching Percival come out of that Angels bullpen throwing 99, 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, the ball just exploded out of his yeah. hand. Big leg kick. Yeah, you could say one of the true dominant closers. And we see, you know, we talk about it, I think, with the, the, the Wickmans and the Jonathan Broxtons and the big, beefy relievers that come in and just maximum effort. Guys, Percival was one of those kind of the, the prototype of that type of reliever. But had longevity yes. to, to add to it. Yeah, what was it, 325 career saves? Yes. <laughs> Bottom nine. Cabrera's at first. Jacobs in the shallow left. And Ludwig is there to make the catch. And here comes Willingham. Last chance for the fish here in the bottom of the ninth inning. The Reds are here. Tomorrow night it's a four game series against Cincinnati. And they're playing good baseball. Just coming off that sweep in Atlanta. Marlins, by the way, have been shut out as a team three times this year. They're on the uh, verge of making it four. Reds didn't beat John Smoltz today, but uh, they faced him, and Smoltz pitched very well. Smoltz hadn't pitched in 16 days, and I believe went seven innings and had 10 or 11 strikeouts. Seven shutout innings. 11 strikeouts. No rehab outings for John Smoltz. There were no reports that Smoltz is now throwing off of flat ground? <laughs> no. Yeah, he is amazing. Get our hands on one of those Cookie Rojas bobbleheads. We have to uh, make sure we're we're real nice to Cookie the next couple of days. Maybe he'll bring a few and, back and with ask him, him to uh, bring a couple back. Yeah, at least one, so we can have it in the booth. I'd like to have it in the booth. Yeah. Willingham single was back in the second. Look at that play. We've seen some barehanded 
plays in the seats on this homestand. Yeah, Josh Willingham broke an interesting stretch that he had going when he singled in the second inning. He had a stretch going where he had four hits, and they were all home runs. <laughs> and he broke that with his single in the second inning. Three two outside. And so Willingham watching comes from Vita. Ken Lee just uh, forwarded the fact that you can get a Cookie Rojas bobblehead on eBay right now. Twenty dollars off is the uh, opening bid. It looks like. Sure. It's a pre-sale auction. We can expense Somebody that. pirated these bobbleheads and is already selling them on eBay. Well, at least Cookie's getting more than the Dennis Leonard bobblehead, which is at 1450. You think we could expense that though? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I've got a few cab receipts in my bag. <laughs> Just throw in a yeah, cab receipt, cab receipt, cookie bobblehead oh, receipt. <laughs> well, with this new new camera we've got up here, we we need props. Hermita takes a strike. I mean, we need aesthetics. Things have to look good. Thus, a cookie Rojas bobblehead would be perfect. Yeah. I'm with you. Percival misses outside. See, right now we have water bottles. We have notepads. I got an old bag of peanuts here if you're interested. I have some red licorice. You know, it's, it, it just has, doesn't have the same look that it would have with a Cookie Rojas bobblehead. No, I mean, we look at the look at this place. You know, we, we're trying to, to keep things neat up here, but it just doesn't seem to happen. 3 1 pitch, down low. So they're loaded up. All right, here we are. Let's see, look. I mean, this is the water bottle. We've got peanuts. Yeah, Tommy's lone licorice. Licorice here. It's just, you know, it's a mess. See, Cookie, 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 cookie we could have that bobble head right there. Yeah. yeah. We could go right here. Oh, there's a, there's a ball. We have a ball. You know, it could be better. See, look. Cookie, right there yeah. on eBay. Right on eBay. 20 bucks. Well, here's Olivo. They are loaded. There's two outs. And a strike to Miguel. Jason Isringhausen is in the bullpen. You know, if Olivo were to walk here, which happens every two moons, or get a base hit and score a run and load the bases, it would be a safe situation. I'm sure Tony LaRusso wasn't planning on getting Edsringhausen up in this inning. No. Kip Wells is hoping for win number four in a season where he's lost 12 games already. He's on pace to pull a Brian Kingman and lose 20. But Olivo comes out of his shoes and swings and misses. And the ball game belongs to 30 year old Kip Wells. As he shuts down the Marlins. 
eight innings, two hits, no runs. And Wells gets the win. He's now four and 12. And the St. Louis Cardinals come to town and take two of three from the Marlins. And another long night for Dontre Lewis. Six runs, 12 hits for the Cardinals. No runs, just three hits for the Florida Marlins. Wells is four and 12. Willis now seven and nine. The Reds are here for a four game series. Starts tomorrow. Marlins on deck at 6.30. We're on FSM Florida. The Marlins post game show is coming up. The Cardinals impressive here tonight. Shut out the fish. Take the series two games to three, six nothing the final.